I will not give myself a pat on the shoulder and say well done. Hi hi, how are you? Good. Because one day if you sit down to say, uh, oh, I think I've achieved this, then there's no more challenges. So it never stops. It never stops. We're gonna cook a big ration of the sauce for the Michelin. Really for Thai fire, so the sauce is the most important uh, factor to all dishes because it's accompanied the dish uh, to make it perfect. Yeah. It takes a lot of dedication, work hard, open your own restaurant and wait for the guy to come to you one day and then you see. I've been working all this while uh, for this dream. Hopefully one day it will happen. We're cooking for 400 to 420. It's a very uh, honorable event for chefs to be here. And we need to be uh, extremely focused to make it the sharpest 400 plate that we can deliver to the guests. Excited to be back home in uh, Singapore again to cook for this uh, prestigious event and gala dinner. Hi, I'm Matthew Leung. I'm working in Stavanger, Norway in restaurant Reno. The dish that I'll be preparing today is an Australian whip I wagyu, served with an edible stone of caramelized onion puree, salt baked puree, and a rose hip from last year. The inspiration of the dish is actually to showcase of Norwegian summer and the beautiful garden city of Singapore. With a lot of aromatic herbs on top, crispy puff greens, and a beef jus served with rose hip vinegar. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Jesley. Nice to meet you, Chef Andrew. Welcome back. Hello. So tell us, how did your culinary journey start? From secondary school until you worked in Norway. Did you work in any other restaurants or how did it happen? Yeah, I worked in a restaurant. My chef, uh, Mento, as well, he spotted me out in secondary school. He's one of the jury. His name is Chef Jimmy Cho. And from there, I followed him and I worked in the uh, Ritz Carlton, uh, Marina Mandarin, Tiffin Club, and all these different places before I hit the age of 21 to go to Norway. I want to go overseas to learn something, to have a better CV. So I sent hundreds and hundreds of CV every day, you know, to different star restaurants. And uh, Sven Reno, my boss, he gave an opportunity and then I just moved there right away without thinking. To young chefs out there who want to be like you, what would you say to them? Work hard, be delegated in your job, be passionate. Don't be like me, uh, be better than me and then reach your goal fast. I like that. This man, thank you so much, chef. Absolutely brilliant. Woo! And this is uh, Yet. Say hello. Hello, hello. I'm Yet. <laughs> so uh, she uh, works in Reno also uh, together with, with me. So I brought her to Singapore. First time in Singapore, no? Yeah. This is uh, Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, he is an uh, apprentice uh, in Reno. He is going to be a full time staff uh, in Reno, and we are very happy to have him in the team as well. Yep. So, how is it like working with Chef? Good, good, really nice. He's a good teacher, really good chef, and he uh, gives uh, the people in the kitchen uh, a lot of uh, responsibilities and uh, give them the time to learn a lot. And it's really nice to work with him. I'm really happy with Matthew as my chef. One thing I learned from him is how to like be relaxed in the kitchen. Yeah, he's very calm at all times. So that's uh, something I've learned from him. <laughs> Thank you so much! As a young chef, if you gain the respect from your guys, you can lead the team. You help them when they need help. You're always there with the team. Don't let them feel left out and you fight with them together. I would say I'm a perfectionist. Um, back in the days in Bugus Door, I was like an insane child. Everything is like explode. But after a while, I can tell you, perfection never exists. It's just a dream, a guideline. So now, you know, tone down, but it's not for me to say, it's the people around me who say this. Okay.
Uh, this uh, chef over here, he's the guy who helped me throughout my whole event, uh, he's Chef uh, Corson. Okay, we, we do together. I had all in my life, my career, people give me the opportunity. Uh, of course, you need to work hard and show them the quality that people can believe in you. As a chef, the working hours is long. It's around 12 to 14 hours, minimally. So stay focused and get it done. It's very important to be home and to one day achieve the Michelin star in Singapore. And the most important for me is actually motivate younger generations of uh, chefs to believe in their self and to, to chase for their dream. Other than my work, the most important thing is family. This is the career that is going to fit the family. So I take it very personally actually. I have this fire inside me to, to push other, and I don't think this will burn out actually. Hey Siri, four minutes timer. Four minutes, starting now. Look. It's boiling, you can offer it. Nothing, huh? You can actually offer it. I don't need But she ate a lot, no? No, I very long made it. Really. Let's go, come. Woo! Holy shit. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> very, very good. His cooking is always too salty for me. Because in my family, my mum uses minimal salt, if not none. Then no, when he adds no, salt. No, no it's salt, no taste, you know? No salt, no flavour, you know? They don't understand this. But the actually. amount he uses is like free flow. How did she end up becoming your PR manager? She got no choice anyway, so. It just. Because uh, my full time job is a PR. So it's more or less like all these things. So if my hair is falling, she'll go and fix right away. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, she fixed it. She, she done a fantastic job and uh, she's uh, doing everything uh, out of my, my job so I can focus on one thing at a time. Actually, which is a big, great help. Is this LDR yeah. Definitely, definitely. Huh? Especially with the time zone difference. So usually when he end works is when I wake up for work. But then I usually set my alarm uh, 6am Singapore time, which is 12am. That's where he usually end work. So we were FaceTime. So I guess uh, these are some of the tiny sacrifices that you have to do. but. Yeah, I mean, as long as you establish that routine and you work things out, I guess, it can be done. It's not so hard, no? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fight, huh? No. So, we are going to Newton to meet up with his two assistants to let them try local food. So, that would be our dinner. So, because he hasn't eaten local food for a long time. Homesick. When I miss my family and my loved ones, yes. Other than that, no. The food, you need to adapt to the environment. So, uh, you shouldn't feel homesick because uh, if you feel homesick, you will not last long. I know he's a psycho, he doesn't feel homesick. <laughs> when he set his mind to doing something, he's just really very focused. So it's like, I mean, like, you're not the person who asked him this. In fact, like, a lot of others also asked him this question before, and I know that she don't feel homesick. That's why I always tell him, um, I can never last a day doing what he do. Yeah, so that's why. Very huge respect to him in this aspect. So homesickness for you is more like missing your family? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's about the people. Yeah. The people. It's always family first to him. So whatever spare time he has, he will always spend it with me and his family. Even for this trip, like it's a work schedule, it's tight. But he told me that like no matter what, he wants to have a meal with his family. Yeah. It's a uh, it's nice to have a family. So you will tone down a little bit it's when you are uh, you become uh, someone's husband, someone's father. You know you will be different. So I'm looking forward for this actually uh, one day, not now, not now, but uh, one day.
there's so many things I want to achieve actually. So many bookie store, Michelin star, bring my parents everywhere uh, around the world, carrying my kid one day if I have one uh, onto the, the guide Michelin stage to receive the award. So there's so many things I want to achieve in, in life, but it's getting there bit by bit. After all these sacrifices, you look back, you know you are doing the right thing. That's the most important. So if, if I chose my life differently six years ago, when I was young, maybe ten years ago, I wouldn't have what I have today. All the mentors, Jimmy Chok, you know, and Sven Eric Reno, Ulrich, all these guys are the, the, the chefs and people that believe in me actually. Every time I'm falling one step, they push me up two steps. So without them, I wouldn't have what I have today. It's not because all because of me. It's all about the gratefulness that people gave you the opportunity. What has been the biggest sacrifice that you've made so far? Because Time. Time, leaving the family to, to Norway. Most of the time, people have a family, sit down for dinner. I, I don't have, you know, I'm away. So you need to treasure the, the moment, you know. So I, I do it as much as I can. But uh, at some time, at some point, I need to say stop. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you in Norway. Hopefully. Yeah.